Hey everyone, Chris here again. It's been quite a while since my last video, but uh, let's jump right in. And uh, today we're going to be working on the uh, transform component. So let's start up here and uh, let's just start off with uh, setting up the includes for here. So the first thing uh, we're gonna need to add to our transform here is we're gonna add, wanna add our math classes. So that'll be our matrix four our matrix three, our vector three. No, oh, let's actually make sure I add that in there. And our quaternion. And as I said before, it was the first time we're actually really using these. These are math classes that I've had for quite a while. We're not really going into how I wrote those math classes. Um, that would be several videos all on its own and they're they're kind of messy <laughs> they, they're sort of hobbled together over as I was I was building game and I kept adding more features as I needed them so they're not perfect but they'll work for giving me the functions I need for here um, we're also going to want to uh, declare the game object here or class just so we have it because we're using it um, uh, we use it in uh, transform class which has a game object as well as the uh, component although component actually will actually deal with it like over here we have this so I don't actually think we need this here but we're gonna leave it just in case um, and we'll just include it down here I don't think it's needed though as is, I'm not very good at figure. Uh, it's one of the areas I don't really know is figuring out those, the pre-declaring of uh, those classes. It's kind of tricky sometimes. Anyways, enough of that. Let's get into actually putting what we're going to have in the transform component. So inside the transform component, we're actually going to have a fair number of stuff in here. So we're going to have uh, quaternion m rotation. That'll hold a rotation. Then we're going to have our three vectors, or vector three. So they're going to be m, up, m, right, and m direction. Just fix those there. So, oh. and a little bit of a rush. Let's try and slow this down a bit. So I, I want to get this video done quickly just because the others have gone on sometimes 20 minutes which is really too long for these and then we're also going to hold a vector 3 M position and then on to creating the matrices so we're going to have a matrix 3 and this is going to be M scale then we're going to have a matrix 4 and this is going to be the local matrix and then we're going to have another matrix 4 and this is going to be the M world matrix alright then we're going to have a matrix for these might actually eventually go but we're leaving them here for now uh, once I get into actually writing rendering code here we might move these to a different place because they're not really appropriate for here but we're going to leave them here for now and this is uh, the model view and the model view projection matrix but they're probably not staying here so for now they can just be left in there uh, now we're going to set up our virtual functions and they're going to be destroy uh, awake start fixed update update And late update and 
and that'll be it for the header. So just going to take a quick break here while I uh, get everything set up for the CPP file and we'll be right back. Alright, and we're back now. Just one little quick thing, a little typo here under Quaternion. I forgot to add the extra N in there, so it's Q-U-A-T-E-R-N-I-O-N. -E so I fixed that, um, and then you can see there's some errors here, but they'll be resolved as soon as we add stuff into the transform. So what I did here is, oh, I don't want to drag that up. Let's just put that back on there. Alright, so we're going to go through and uh, copy uh, those from transform H from the header over to the CPP file. Delete those virtuals. Oh, didn't want to delete the function as well. Copy the transform here. Paste it in front of the function name like that. I'm just going to do a little formatting here. It's not necessary. It'll work just the same. And then we're going to add our brackets here. All right, so the only things we really need to write is we're going to write awake and we're going to write the start function. Everything else is actually going to be a copy of the start function. And that's because all this component does, the only thing this does is it updates all our transformation matrices. All right, that's all it does. There will add other functions in here later, which go through and add rotation and stuff like that. They allow us to rotate, translate the objects more intuitively than just altering all those vectors, which can be confusing, especially when dealing with quaternions and when you want to rotate by degrees around a particular axis. So we'll add that stuff in later. But let's just start over with the uh, await component here. So we're just going to do this m up. This is going to equal a vector 3. Oh, not a vector. I don't know what that is. Keyboard fails, right? And we can actually just copy this line here. So we're going to do this code as quickly as possible. We have a right and a direction. And I'm not really going to talk about coordinate frames in this, but if you know coordinate frames, then you'll know that the up vector is y, the right is x, and the direction is z. And as you can see right there, so that's that. But we're not really going to get into that. I expect you to already know those uh, transformations and how to work through them. Um, we'll get into actually how you pull data out, though, in a minute. And it should be noted that my matrices are in row order, ma row major order, yeah, row major order, uh, row order major, sorry, one of those two, <laughs> it escapes me, I'll have to look it up later because it's going to bug me now, but that's okay. Uh, so for the matrices, you just have to keep that in mind so that if I set them up that way, so then if I'm using OpenGL, I just transpose them, otherwise I can just leave them as is for DirectX, but if I do get to rendering in this, it will be an OpenGL. So I'll just have a transpose on them. And one of the things I could do to improve it is obviously just not remove the need to transpose it by making it uh, by making it not actually need that by automatically assuming that I'm with OpenGL. Right now I don't do that. But I certainly could. Now we're just setting the position here. And we're just going to set it to 0, 0, 0. And that is uh, the local position. But 0, 0, 0 is going to be the world 0, 0, 0 as well as local in this case. And we're going to set a scale matrix. And we're going to pass in false. In my particular matrix class, when I pass in false like that, it tells me that it is an identity matrix. So that will mean that we'll get a scale matrix that is identity. Now we're going to go in and write our start component. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the we're going to create our local matrix and we're going to use the matrix for builder that I have set up 
and that's a, a static function. Basically, it takes the it takes the rotation, it takes the position, and it takes the scale of the object. And so this this actually will support non-uniform scales, which is nice. Um, I mean, you should really avoid non-uniform scales, but it wasn't actually that hard to uh, have the non-uniform scales in there. So you can have non-uniform scales. And I frankly find that there are lots of times I end up using non-uniform scales. I know we're not, you're not supposed to. I don't really fully understand the reason why, but I support non-uniform scales. Right now, here we're going to be pulling out of our local matrix the right up and direction. So initially, these will just be the one on the y for up, one on the uh, x, or rather, sorry, I just looked at that. That's actually backwards there. The up is that, and the x is that. Look, yeah, that, that, I knew that didn't look right. I think because in my original sample, I had the right first so that it lines up better. So I'm just moved that there so you can see that it actually lines up properly, right? So this is, we're just pulling out of the matrix. Now this is particular to my matrix class. How you pull this out is going to matter uh, based on how you access values in your matrix. But for me, all I do is I just pull out the first value, the fifth value, and the ninth value, or because it's zero based, it's zero, four, and eight, and that'll pull the first column of relevant data from the four by four matrix. All right? And then we can just close that off there. And we can actually save time by copying this line. Uh, passing it in the up and the direction and then for the up we're going to pass 1, 5, and 9 and that's from a zero based index and then for the Z we're going to pass in 2, 6, and 10 and those are the relevant values for our coordinate frame. Now we're going to uh, set this world matrix and we're going to set this to equal this local matrix and we'll handle parents in a second. We're set to equal this local matrix rather there. And then we're going to have an if statement and this is going to be, let's get that bracket the right way. If M world matrix, or sorry, not if M world matrix, if M game object dot M parent is not equal to null, there. And so this will make sure that we're only doing this if there is uh, if there's a parent. Otherwise, we can ignore this. And we're just going to take this world matrix here. We're going to make it equal this world matrix there and then we're just going to backtrack here and we're going to go we're just going to copy this game object m parent m transform and that's why the game object has a transform so we can easily access it because it's something that's going to be used a lot and we times it by the world matrix. And my matrix class handles the multiplication already. And I just overload the operators for my math classes. Generally, I never overload operators, except inside my math classes, because I could do like matrix malt and pass into matrices and multiply that way. But I'd rather have the overloaded operators. It lets me know that it's a math function rather than some other kind of function. So it's the one exception where I overload operators. 
Now the nice thing about writing that once is we can actually go through and copy that over to the others. Now I'm not sure if this is actually the best method for doing it, updating it in every update. Although it's the best option I can come up with right now because the fixed update for the physics, we want to make sure this is updated before we update any any physics component. Same with the regular update and same with the late update. We always want to make sure that this is updated. So the way I'm doing it is we're actually going to update it every we're going to, so we're actually going to update this twice per frame and then once additional time on the fixed update plus once on the start. So there are a number of uh, updates happening here with the transforms and I'm not sure if this is the best method. Um, I'm not sure if I actually need to update in the late update because not much is going to change between the update and the late update although something could change like if the object moves position I'm going to want to have it uh, reflected in the late update and we'll play around with that and see if that's best but for now we're going to leave it like that. And so that wraps up the transform class for the moment. Uh, we'll come back later and we'll add in some uh, helper functions to actually allow us to do things like rotate and translate and scale the object uh, better than just setting it uh, with the raw matrices and vectors to make it more intuitive. So uh, that's it for now. I'll see you later.